Go ahead. Okay. Our mission, Helping Parents Heal is a nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting bereaved parents to become shining light parents by providing support and resources to aid in the healing process. We go a step beyond other groups by allowing the open discussion of spiritual experiences and evidence for the afterlife in a non-dogmatic way. Affiliate groups welcome everyone, regardless of religious or non-religious background, and allow for open dialogue. Attendance today at this meeting is voluntary, and we are here for the benefit of learning from and sharing with other parents whose child has passed away. It is understood that our discussions are intended to be confidential and not designed to replace traditional therapy or spiritual counseling. However, these Zoom meetings are helpful to parents all around the world, and they are posted on YouTube so that affiliate members who are not able to attend this meeting live can also watch. Helping Parents Heal offers a wide variety of speakers to allow parents to be informed about many possible ways to heal, to connect with their children, and to learn about the afterlife. The views expressed by our guests do not necessarily reflect those of Helping Parents Heal, and we ask that you take from their presentations whatever may benefit you personally. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for being here this evening, Christine. Thank you so much, Irene, and I know everybody wants to hear Christine, so I, her bio is really short. I'll just quickly read it <laughs> know more about her. Christine Salter is a psychic and medium, spiritual teacher, and energy healer who works in the loving service of the divine. Christine developed her natural gifts as a psychic medium and healer as an adult after being immersed in a holistic healing school. She was contacted by the angels in 2004 and learned to channel and heal with them. As she continued to expand her gifts, it became clear that her soul's mission was to come forth as a medium and help people connect with loved ones in spirit and heal the trauma that they may be carrying. Christine is an evidentiary medium and an angel messenger who helps people heal their lives and reclaim the light that was dimmed by the passing of a loved one. Christine currently lives in Phoenix, Arizona. Please learn more about her by visiting www.christinesalter.com. She was at our first conference to standing room only. She's already told us that she'll come back to our second conference, which is going to be in 2022. <laughs> and we're hoping to have it in the third weekend of August. And we're, we're in the planning stages. And Irene and I actually spoke to the Sheraton Grand Wild Horse Pass today. But without further ado, please join me in welcoming Christine Salter. Uh, thank you so much. Gosh, I just, oh, I got goosebumps. I love, 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 love coming and talking to you guys and helping you, you know, navigate this maze of how do you connect with your kids? Because I know that your kids are like, knock, 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 we're right here and we're gonna help bridge this gap. And so, um, gosh, I got goosebumps. I can feel everybody right now. So when I taught this class at the first conference, it was, it was um, a two-part class, standing room only, so fun. So fun to watch you guys go, oh my God, this stuff works. It was just, it was just the best. So thank you for having me back so we can work with the pendulum again. Um, I'm going to walk you through how do we use the pendulum, um, connecting with your kids, all of the steps that I like to teach to use it in a, a good manner. And then I do have some questions that people have been asking me and Elizabeth and I went through some questions too um, about like some of the Q&A, some of the other stuff that may come up. And so as far as I'm concerned, when you're communicating with spirit, the more you know, the better it is. So are you guys ready? I want to scroll. I kind of want to see your guys' faces for a moment. So, <laughs> okay. So when it comes to communicating with your kids, the first thing that I want you to do just right now, and you've probably already done it, is I want you just to ask your kids, hey, do you come in here and be with me right now? Now, chances are you've already done that. Chances are all day you're like, listen, we got a class today, so you need to make sure that you show up. So there's some steps that in my world, and I think is really important, is getting ourselves ready uh, to communicate with spirit. So a lot of what I generally teach, and this is just a nice tool, and I keep looking at it because it's here on my desk, um, is really about how do we start to trust the process and hear our kids and connect. And so this is a really nice tool to do that. 
One of the first things that I think is important, particularly when you're first starting to use a pendulum, is to get yourself in the right emotional space. So if you're in a place of heavy, deep grief and crying, it's probably not the best energy to be sitting in to sit down and have this conscious connection with your kids. So getting grounded and centering and is very important, particularly when you're first learning. So grounding and centering. Grounding means you are in your body, you are connected, we're connected to the earth, we're very present. Centering is being able to just put everything else aside so you can be really focused on the task at hand. So when we start, I'm gonna walk you through a little grounding meditation just real quick. Um, and then we'll, we'll break out the pendulums. The other thing that I need to tell you in my experience with how Spirit started working with them in 2004 is it's really important to ask somebody in Spirit, the highest level guide available to you to oversee your communications. Spirit took me on a crazy journey to make sure that I understood that that's what they wanted me to do because that's what they taught me to do. That's what I teach you to do. The person that I like to work with, and you may have a high level guide that you love or you're already connected to, I work with Archangel Michael. St. Michael in the Catholic Church, he is the protector angel. He shows up with his sword and his big wings, and he is available to everybody at all at the same time. So if everybody has said in your head, Archangel Michael, come be with me, they're not uh, restricted by time and space. And so energetically, he can be with everybody all at the same time. So I joke that he's my supervisor. <laughs> while I'm doing this and talking to you, someone's touching my head. While I'm doing this and talking to you, you might hear me say, Archangel Michael, help me with this or that. Or somebody asks a question and I'm like, I don't know. Okay, let me let me get that answer. That's who I will be um, connecting with. So when you do this, I want you just to, whether you believe it or not, just ask for your highest level guide available or Archangel Michael to come and oversee all of your communications. Uh, we're gonna talk about clearing your pendulum. So to get it ready for clear communication, cause it's a div divination tool and it can get muddy um, energetically. Um, we're gonna talk about how to use the pendulum and then how to end our session. So we're not just wide open to the universe and, and still bringing in stuff that we're not um, meaning to at that point. So we're going to start with some grounding. So I want you guys to close your eyes. Take a nice, slow, deep breath. We're setting the intention. Okay, I'm going to clear myself so I can receive clear answers. Any nervousness, anxiety, anything like that that you're feeling right now, I want you to take a breath in and just just blow it out and just let it start moving out of your body. I want you to bring your awareness. So I say my spidey senses, bring your awareness just to the top of your head right now. And whatever comes to you when I ask these questions, we're just gonna get into our body a little bit. So notice how the top of your head feels with your senses not actually touching your head and just feel, does it feel tight? Does it feel loose? I don't feel anything. Just check in and just see what you notice, whatever comes to mind. And then move your awareness down to your neck. Just notice like, oh, I haven't really checked in with my face, myself lately. How does my neck feel? You might wanna stretch it a little bit and just notice how does it feel? We're getting grounded into our bodies. How does it feel? What do you notice? Bring your attention to your shoulders. How do your shoulders feel? Do you wanna move them around a little bit? Are they tight? Are they loose? Does it feel like you're carrying the weight of the world? If you are, just energetically imagine you're just setting it down. We're creating the sacred space right now to connect with the kids. Nice breath in and let it out. Any fear or anxiety, if it's starting to creep up, take a breath in and blow it out. Bringing your awareness now down your back. Just see what you notice. And maybe nothing. Bring your awareness now down to your legs. Down to your feet. 
I want you to imagine however this comes to you, whether you can see it, feel it, have a knowing about it. I want you to imagine that you can grow some roots down the bottom of your feet. You may have one root, two roots, 100 roots, however it comes to you, it's perfectly fine. And watch or feel those roots going down into the earth. And as they go down, they get wider, they get stronger, and they get more resilient, allowing these roots to go down into the earth, connecting you with the earth energy, supporting you and grounding you, allowing those roots to go down. And if you would like, you can imagine drawing up earth energy, back up these roots, gently, easily, until it comes up to your belly button. Just imagining that energy just flows without effort, just by thinking about it. Coming up to your belly button, rooting you and grounding you to the earth. You may start to feel a little heavy and that's okay. Because sometimes we float out of our body a little bit and this is just bringing you back down. Take another slow, deep breath. And let it out. When you're feeling calm, when you're feeling clear, I'm going to ask you to open your eyes and come back into the room where you are. Nice and relaxed, easy peasy. We're going to pick up our cute little divination tool. Some of you guys may have your pendulums for the very first session we did at the first conference. This is my little pendulum. Everybody has their pendulum to clear the energy because this is an energetically sensitive tool. There's a lot of ways you can do it. I prefer what I think is the easiest method because if it's easy, we'll do it. I want you to put your pendulum in your non-dominant hand. So if you're right-handed, put it in your left hand. I want you to imagine, because we have chakras in our palms, so we have energy centers that come out of our palms. I want you just to cup over your pendulum put it between your hands and just visualize. And even if you're like, I don't know if I'm doing it right, you're doing it right because it's all intention. I want you to imagine that some white light is coming out from your hands into the pendulum. And we're gonna just imagine that the energy clears. So you hold on to it. You can shake it if you want, particularly with the stones. It's a really good way to clear the energy. I know mine is getting kind of hot and I'm sweating because I'm connected to spirit, but that's okay. And I'm just gonna hold this here until I have the sense. Okay, I think it's done. Now my pendulum hasn't been out for a while, so I think it needs to cook a little bit more, so to speak. So I'm just gonna sit here and wait until I feel like Okay, so I'm pouring light from my palms into my pendulum. That's what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm so hot right now. I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> always happens when connecting with spirit. Okay, I feel like, okay, we're good. So a lot of this is going to be learning to trust yourself too um, when it comes to connecting with spirit. So, all right, untangle. So, you can hold your pendulum in either hand. I don't know that it totally matters. Um, if you want to try it, actually, that's a great idea. See, spirit, we can try it with different hands and see what we get. So I want you to hold up your pendulum in your, just pick a hand. We'll just give it a whirl, right? Okay, so it's energetically clear. We're grounded and centered. We called Archangel Michael in to come and oversee our conversations, right? We're gonna check our pendulum because our, I'm like, stop moving, sorry. <laughs> we're gonna check our pendulum and we're gonna check to see what is yes. So tell your pendulum, show me yes. And then see what it starts to do. And you can keep your eyes open. Show me yes. 
and try to keep your hand as still as possible. And just watch what it does. Does it go clockwise? Does it go counterclockwise? Is it going back and forth? Just take a nice breath and relax into it. Show me yes. Mine's about to hit me in the face. It's going so big. Show me yes. Okay. And when you're done, I always make my pendulum stop all the way because that's just what I like. Okay, show me no. Hold it as still as you can, but don't stress about it. Show me no. So my, mine, which is probably different than yours, my yes was a big clockwise circle. My no was back and forth. Okay. I can't scroll through and look at everybody. So hopefully, hopefully it's working for you guys. Okay. All right, so stop. I love to test my pendulum. I like to ask it a question that I know the answer to and see if it knows what the truth is. So sometimes I'll just say, my name is Christine. See what happens. Or you could say something that is not a truth and see what it, what it does. Okay, stop. My name is John. No, my name is not John. <laughs> and I want you guys just to kind of relax into it because if you're finding you're really stressing, like, oh my gosh, this needs to work, I want you to stop and just take a breath. Okay. Right. So I was, I was, I talked to him, like, stop. Okay. So I want you to ask your child to come stand behind you right now. And I want you to ask the pendulum by, by your child's name, blink, are you here? And see what happens. And I'm gonna use my grandma because, well, I don't have a child in spirit, so I'll ask, I'll ask. And you can do it out loud or in your head. So I asked if my loved one was here. No. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's having any trouble. I'm sorry, I can't scroll through all the all of the screens here. Stop. Ask it a question about your child and then see what the pendulum says. And you can look at the pendulum when you ask, when you talk to it. And if tears are coming up, beautiful, let them out. Don't try to stifle it. You can ask them if such and such was a sign for you last week or today, or is that really you that's sending blank? Ask them. Was that really a dream? Yeah, you can use a necklace. If you don't have a pendulum, you just want to make sure it has some good weight on it and a fair amount of um, length. So I find metal because metal is an energy uh, is conductive for energy that uh, metal to me works best, but you can have five different pendulums and they're all probably work a little bit different. Okay, so ask your child something that you want to know. What do you want to know? Are they happy? People really want to ask that, right? Are you really happy? Ask them. Say what your pendulum says. Ask them if they're proud of you. You thought you saw them in the house the other day. Say, was that really you? See what they say. And if you're sitting with some sort of guilt or coulda, shoulda, woulda, 
when it comes to asking the pendulum a question, it really needs, I should have covered this before and I'm sorry, it's coming into my head now, like a Christine, direct questions that can be answered in a yes or no fashion is the best way to get accurate information coming through your pendulum. So if you say, you know, do you forgive me for whatever? Of course, the answer is going to be yes, right? But if you say, you know, should I do this or should I do that? That's not a good question to be able to get a clear answer. So something that's very direct and to the point, and that can be answered yes or no, is going to be the best way with the pendulum. Now, there's other ways to get that answers, whether it's learning mediumship or automatic writing and those kind of tools to get more detailed, this is going to be more short answers. So, but if you have a coulda, shoulda, woulda, or some sort of deep, deep, deep pain along those lines, ask them a question. They love you so much. And I know they're proud of you. It's a hard, hard, hard path and you're doing it and you're growing. And they're pr I'm so proud of you. Are they upset with you? Let me answer that one for you. No, absolutely not. They're not holding a grudge somewhere over on the other side. They may have things they have to take care of and so they pop in and out, but it's not because they're upset with you. It doesn't work that way. They just, so much love, so much love for you guys. So if you're afraid, thank you, um, Archangel Michael. If you're afraid that, if you're afraid of an answer, um, because you're afraid of somehow you failed in some way. If you ask a question and you don't get a real clear answer, you're not going to get a real clear answer if you're afraid of what the answer might be. So that's something to be aware of. So when you ask questions, you have to really be ready for the answer, though the answer probably isn't what you think because it's all love. It's all love. Okay. All right. One of the other things that I really love to do. Oh, thanks. See, I have a supervisor called Archangel Michael, and I think something, and they put something else in my head. If you have another loved one in spirit right now, you have another child, you have a family member, ask your child to step aside. Ask that other family member to step forward. And the same thing. And I want you again to hold your pendulum and ask if so-and-so is here and then see. Maybe it turns out to be a no and then that means they're not available and that's okay. So ask if you have another loved one, if you want to. You don't have to, you can keep asking all the kind of questions. I just wanna give you some other things that you can do with the pendulum because I know there's questions that I need to get to also. So what do you do? Okay, are you here? And say their name. You can ask them a question that you know that they would know the answer to. See what the pendulum says. How does it respond? And you can ask them questions because energy is energy. It's who are you intending? What energy, what vibe, what vibration? Who are you intending to connect with? And with that intention, that's what helps build that connection. And while you're doing it, and those of you that are having success, and again, I can't look through all the screens and I'm sorry, or feeling other, other loved ones, I want you to feel in. Does it feel like there's a different energy that you're connecting with? Close your eyes and take a breath and just feel. So say you want to talk to mom. It's like, oh, wow, you know what? This is working a little funky. It's working a little different. Yeah, because another energy has stepped forward. You want to talk to mom? You want to talk to dad? You want to talk to Archangel Michael? You want to talk to your guides? I'll answer this one. Elizabeth asked me earlier, you want to talk to your pets? Yes, you can. As long as you have learned how to discern different frequencies, and that's something I do want to talk about in a little bit, discernment of spirit, it, it's all energy. It's all energy. So if you have a beloved horse, and you're like, I feel like my horse isn't around. That's kind of weird. You know, pull out the pendulum and you can check. I love it. And I'm sure they love it. <laughs> okay. So I know I have a lot. I have to keep track of my time. So if I keep looking over, I'm trying to stay on track because I could talk for five years. So sorry about that. Okay. So what I want you to do is we're just going to, if you're talking to another loved one, when we're done, I'll have you pull this back up. Um, 
I want you to call your kids back in. I'm gonna hold our pendulum. I'm just holding it up so you can see what I'm doing. Ask them to step forward again. Ask your pendulum if they're here. Did they step back in? Did they take over? Of course, my pendulum. <laughs> my grandmother's like, yes, Christine, I didn't leave. Okay. Okay. And this is one of my favorite things for you guys to do. Okay. Stop your pendulum. Ask your kids to show you, I love you, and see what your pendulum does. Say, show me I love you. Show me I love you. And see if it's a different movement than it has been. And it may take a little bit for them to get it moving. So for me, it's counterclockwise for I love you from my grandmother. And everybody's might be different. And you could test it with other loved ones and see how they want to say it. So if you're feeling your kids and you get grounded and you get out your pendulum and you have a conversation, and you're like, I just wish I could hear you say I love you. Though you may not have an auditory, you can have this visual. And they can get this just whipping around. So don't hold it too close to your face. <laughs> or they might think that's funny. I don't know. It depends on your kids. So um, I do. Sorry. Every time I'm like, promise, don't have bugs. I have spirit. <laughs> um, I wanted to go over some of the questions. Um, because I want to make sure when we use our pendulum that we're getting good information, right? That's the whole point of having the pendulum. And so sometimes we can get some funky answers. So some of you I'm sure have probably used a pendulum for a while. And sometimes it's like, I don't know, it just doesn't quite seem right. Let me tell you a little secret, okay? Psychics, mediums, I've been doing this work for 20 years. I had a spirit in my house last night that actually closed a door and I didn't know it was there until I heard the door slam and I went, what in the world was that? This morning I went in, covered in full goosebumps and had to clear it out. So I put my psychic protections out. I work with Archangel Michael, but I am also a human in the 3D earth plane. So when you are working with spirit, you have to start to trust yourself and you have to start to learn some discernment of who might be with you. When I started using a pendulum years and years ago, spirit took me through some really fun exercises, not really, <laughs> where I had to learn that if something was coming through and it just doesn't feel right, then I just put the pendulum down and I walk away. I asked spirit, clean the house, clear the house for me. I mean, I, I personally am not like Teresa Caputo. I can go to Walmart and I don't feel anything because I don't stay open unless it's an intentional connection. Of course, my guides talk to me all the time and that's fine, but I don't pick up on everybody else's stuff because I still have to earth too. So if something seems a little off or seems a little funky, or if you're getting messages that it's just like, ah, they're testing you or you have to do something, I learned the hard way, put your pendulum down. You might be dependent upon it too much. Move your body, reground yourself. You may need to pick it up the next day. Um, as, but a lot of it is really learning to trust yourself. And I think sometimes spirit lets things happen because what's the best way to learn something? experience, right? You learn something and you don't ever forget it. I can tell you something all day, but when something happens to you, then you understand. So Archangel Michael is going to be your backup. You can sage, you can sage your space, and that also helps clear energy, but there's just sometimes things are just going to be a little funky. I'm not wanting you to be afraid if something just seems a little funky. My personal philosophy is I look at everything as either high vibrating or low vibrating. I give it no more power than that. And there's other words we can use. And when you use these other words, 
do you give it more power and fear? So is it high vibrating? Is it low vibrating? That's as much attention as it needs. You guys watch a lot of scary movies and all that kind of stuff and you're connecting with that energy. I would be mindful that that's the vibration you might be connecting with. So if you're drawing some of that kind of stuff in, be conscious of what you're consuming. Not necessarily food wise. Okay, so um, if your pendulum has been sitting for a long time, like mine, it's nice and hot in my hands now, you always wanna clear it. So the question I get is, um, how often should you clear your pendulum? And I would say, if you're a regular user of it, probably, probably weekly, if you're using it a lot, weekly. Though I still don't think that, it, I think that it's good to build up other abilities instead of just always using the pendulum because there's a lot of different ways to open yourself and grow and become more psychic. And as far as I'm concerned, we're all psychic mediums. We all can do it. It's just fine tuning it in. But you could, depending on the kind of stone you have, you can put it out, well, thank you, under the moonlight. Moonlight helps clear the energy of stones. So they say on the full moon, you should put your crystals out and let your crystals be cleared. I have yet to do that. Because, <laughs> well, I just don't have the time and energy to, to do it. So I like to, because I'm an energy healer, put it in my hands and just kind of shake it around like dice and just clear it out. Um, depending on the stone, you could put it in salt. You have to research the stone you choose so you handle the stone um, properly. If somebody else touches your pendulum, just like I would with oracle cards, I would re-clear the energy. So if it's just like, this just doesn't make any sense, try clearing it first. And if it still just isn't quite doing what you want, I would, I would put it down and I would just say, okay, we're just going to break from this and then I will come back. It's for you to look for signs and symbols and things like that. I know you guys are amazing at finding the signs from your kids. You can ask, okay, can I have a confirmation outside of myself that maybe should I put the pendulum down or is it good? It's, it's such a growth process. So I want you to be aware of it. Have I had funky stuff happen with spirit? Yeah, that's why I get to teach because I've already walked through a lot of it. <laughs> but it's not to be fearful about, okay? Um, pendulum maps. I have a strong opinion about uh, pendulum maps and I have a strong opinion because in 2004, I had an angel board. So before I knew that I was, you know, I had these abilities, I'm calm gifts, their abilities. Uh, it's like a Ouija board, but it has angels on it. Guess what? It doesn't matter. It's still, if you don't know how to open carefully and mindfully, I just think they're a bad idea. Um, that's my personal opinion. Uh, I would never touch one, <laughs> never again. But the pendulum maps, I think can get start to get muddied. I think they can start to get confusing and things start coming through. And like I said, if it's just like, this just, just doesn't make any sense. I think that is the time to just put it down and maybe come back to it. I still like the yes or no questions because they're more precise. And of course I'm a teacher of automatic writing and channeling. And so I would recommend that over using a pendulum app. So that's just my own professional and personal opinion. I would not, I personally wouldn't use it because I'd rather have the information come in um, myself. I know there's lots of questions that I'm, <laughs> I like watching the clock here. Um, subconscious, I have people who sometimes, uh, yeah, we have very different, we have different opinions, right? On how this works. I've had people say, it's just your subconscious. Your child can't talk to you through a pendulum. And boy, does that get me a little heated because <laughs> that is not true. When I first started using pendulums, I used it to make um, elixirs. I guess that's the easiest way for, to say it for clients, for energy medicine. And one time I was in my room and the room was kind of dark and I was using it to make sure that what I thought was right and I literally, with my physical eyes, saw a, like a white hand touch my pendulum and move it. And I knew that I'm not seeing things. That wasn't me. I was, I'm clairvoyant. I 
I can see things in my imagination, but I can see them with my physical eyes sometimes too. And because of that, I'm positive that you're not the one who is moving this with your subconscious. It's your kids. While you're doing it, you might get tingling on your head. You might get like a tap on your shoulder and you're like, why is my muscle twitching? Yeah, that's your kid. Like, no, I'm right here. So when you're working with the pendulum, I want you to pay attention to the other things that are going on around you as well. Because if you're having doubt, like, all right, all right. Spirit, Christine says that this isn't me doing this. Do something else. Tell them to touch your head and then you wait. You're going to look like me, looking like you have bugs because spirit likes to tingle the head a lot. Work with them in advance. Say, okay, give me some physical sensations that you're here. So when you're using the pendulum and then you feel it, that'll help you have more faith that they're the ones that are actually coming through. That's a great idea. Thank you, spirit. <laughs> okay. Trust yourself, trust yourself, trust yourself, trust yourself. This is a journey. The important part is that you're learning and you're growing. Use other tools too. You can get an Oracle card deck that are mediumship cards that can just help you grow in your ability to discern messages, to feel things, and to really open to spirit. So when I did teach that class, we, we did both. So um when you're all done and i know you have questions so i hurry when you're all done and you're like all right i want to say jake i don't know who is here who has jake but i want to say jake so all right jake thank you so much for coming and talking to me i love you so much i love you the pendulum and then we need to kind of close that door hi gail of course of course that's your son who's like oh, i know christine it's me, it's me. Um, we wanna kind of close ourselves back down because if we stay open, psychically receptive to everything, it can be very draining. We can pick up other people's energy. And so I always just imagine, okay, I'm opening up and then I'm gonna close back down. We have cords of energy between each other. And even in this session, when we're all done, I promise I will be cutting cords. You need to cut cords of energy. And I know that some of you go, ah, 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 have to cut cords of energy to release the energy, but the cords of love will never, ever, ever be cut. But you don't need to stay open and connected in that way because it can be very draining. Um, it can be very tiring. And it's best to just be clear energetically so you could be grounded and continue to open. So I think that's it for what I have to say. Now I know you have questions. So let me see how I can help. Yes. Oh my gosh. And I just want to first say thank you so much for doing this for us. And we have lots of people saying thank you in the chat box. But uh, Rhonda has a really interesting question. And okay. she says that she was using her pendulum the other night and things were great. And then it started twitching, jerking and moving before her eyes. She sat there and just watched it move on its own before her eyes. This never happened before. I don't know what's happening. Do you have any thoughts on that, Christine? I, I do. So in my head, I immediately think somebody else is stepping forward to take over the pendulum. So if that happens, I want you to get quiet and I want you just to send a thought like who is touching my pendulum right now because I have a sense maybe there's a mother or a grandmother like like a changing of the guards is what they're saying so it's a, a switch of the energy of whoever's um taking over that's interesting yeah that's amazing I, that's beautiful because you're just like it's Sorry, it comes in my head too. <laughs> um, sometimes they're trying to figure out how to get it moving because it takes a lot of energy. I mean, I'm sure you, I'm sorry if like I'm talking so fast, but blah, blah, blah. Um, in the movie Ghost, Patrick Swayze has to figure out how to move that can and he just keeps putting it finger through it. And eventually he figures out how to manipulate stuff on the earth plane. That's the impression that they're giving me. So they're trying to trying to get it to move but it's just, they're having to work with it because it's a physical object. So I had a sense somebody else was trying to come in. So there you go. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, Aza is asking, is it going to make her son sad when she says it's time to go and she cuts the cords? He won't go anywhere. 
hey, we'll just be sitting right there or messing with you or, or whatever. No, they know, they know that we have to life, right? And they can still talk to you in your head. This is just a tool of lots of types of tools. So you just touched your head, Elizabeth. This is a tool of lots of types of tools that you can use to start to trust yourself that the conversations you're having in your head are real. So if you if you're like, was I just talking to him? All right, I'm gonna get out my pendulum. Was that you? And it's it's a way to have confirmation of other things that are taking place. So no, they're not sad. They're just gonna keep talking to you anyway, whether you have a pendulum out or not. In a different way. That's in beautiful. a different way. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kathy's asking, what is the best stone to use? I'm not sure if we talked about this last time. I am sure that I know what you're going to say, but I um, <laughs> to hear your answer. Are you psychic, Elizabeth? <laughs> um, honestly, this is what I would say. My first thought would be amethyst because amethyst is a very high vibrating spiritual stone. But if you feel drawn to another stone, that's perfectly fine. Uh, here's sodalite. Sodalite is uh, Archangel Michael's stone. Um, you can use clear quartz. The one that I have here, one of the, the people who got to the conference, this is a chakra stone, right? But I'm missing the root because <sighs> the lady who got it, she came to me. She's like, Christine, what does this mean? I think she was from Australia. What does this mean? There's no root. And I was like, I guess <laughs> we're ungrounded. Let me give you one. So I, I don't have a root on it. But um, so it, it's really, it's really preference. I mean, you can have something metal. It just needs to be something with some good weight because they do have to get to move it. Um, and with, you know, a decent, st a de decent string, you don't want to have like a little tiny one, but you also don't want, you know, like an 18 inch string hanging down because they're trying to manipulate the physical object and get it to move. So I don't know, this is probably what, six inches ish. And I think that that's a pretty good length. So here's a good, ready? Sorry, this is intuit it say angels guides what stone would be good for me to use for a pendulum and then go with what feels right we're so far away from trusting ourselves in our intuition and so i will ask you to start you know testing yourself a little bit there's no right and there's no wrong but if you pick up one you're like eh, trust that and you pick up another one you're like oh this one feels good or maybe you love green or your child loves green, whatever, whatever feels good to you. That's the best pendulum for you. That's wonderful. We've had several questions in the chat box. And this is also one from beforehand when people were sending questions in, what does it mean when the pendulum doesn't move at all? Is it maybe, uh, is it a maybe to the question or an I don't know or something else? It sometimes can be, I can't tell you that information. It might be that you might be asking something that isn't available to you. You know, say if somebody, um, somebody was responsible for your child's passing and you're trying to get information about that, if that's not available to you, it might just be like, I'm sorry, I can't answer that. Do we understand on a human level why that might be? Not really, because we want all of our answers and we want it all right now, but there's an unfolding. Um, it could be them trying to get the energy moving. And then Spirit's also saying it could just be that maybe you're just not quite ready yet. You might not be ready yet, even though you're like, I am, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Um, try and relax, put the, put the pendulum away, walk away, come back. If you're having trouble, I would say, um, ask Archangel Michael to come in on your pendulum, get him moving it, get you comfortable, get you more confident. And then, and then have your kids come in. But if it's sitting there wiggling, they're like, they're like <laughs> trying, trying to get it to move. So it may take practice with you relaxing and them learning to work with it. But I, if you call in Michael, Archangel Michael, I wouldn't be surprised if it moved pretty easily, so. That's really helpful. Uh, Sherry is saying something that I think that I should just say very quickly. It's a great okay. idea. Makes, uh, let's see, 
Oh, wait, 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 sorry. Sherry said that it makes her happy to hear about amethyst. I also love the idea of amethyst, but I was sure you were going to say whatever resonates with you. Um, <laughs> is saying, do you think it would be good to get your child's birthstone? I'm looking on Amazon right now. So that's also maybe a thought, huh? I think that's amazing. <laughs> I think why not, right? Because it helps you feel closer and it brings some healing to your heart. You're like, this is your birthstone. I don't know who has this or what, but I keep seeing a pendulum that's like a little crystal angel. Don't know who has that. I just have to put that out there because that's that's it doesn't have to be a real long elongated. It can it can be something relatively short. It just needs to have some um some weight to it. I love that idea. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, yeah, do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> yes. um, so uh, there's a question that um, someone has asked beforehand. Will the pendulum work the same way if I use a stand for it to swing from instead of me holding it? Will I still get clear answers? Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I have never used a stand. Um, I think that part of us physically holding it is that we are adding energy to it as well. Um, but I've never, I've never considered using a stand, but I think the two energies working together, I would think would be better, but I've never used a stand, but that's my very first thought that comes through. Well, I think it's like, you're not, if you need to use a stand, it's like, you're not really trusting it or trusting your, the process yourself yet. Cause then it's like ego. It's like, okay, I'm going to put it on a stand now work you show me and that's that's more of an ego place and that's, that's my opinion and some of you it might work great you love it and whatever but i would want to, i just want to add i want it in my energy field and i want to add some energy to it with intention so and some of you might use it and i'd love to hear like you know do video <laughs> look at it yeah, that would be and fun they can do that you know cool doing videos as well. Um, Delar is asking how we should store our pendulum when it's not in use. Do you have any good thoughts on that, Christine? You know, last time this question came up, Spirit, your kids were so smart. Um, it is a sacred tool. So I, I mean, I still literally have a little velvet bag that these came in and the little box that they came in. But last time Spirit said that you could store them um, where all of their, um, their things are. So where you have their pictures and things like that to remind you to pull out the pendulum and talk to them. For whatever reason, in my little bag here, this is another pendulum actually that I have. It's just a little silver pendulum and it's, it's um, a little more dainty, I guess, but this is my other one. I needed to show that for whatever reason. Yeah, store it with their stuff. When you walk by the picture and you see it sitting there and like, oh, yeah, I probably should sit down and talk to them just more as a reminder because your kids want to chat and they want you to know that they're there and they like this tool. So it's fun. That's wonderful. Now, uh, Shelly is saying, I just want to tell you this, she has a crystal yeah. angel. And then Bambi is saying she has a crystal a crystal angel pendulum. It's her mother's and she uses a different one. So they both wanted to just let you know that they actually have what you're talking about, which is fun. Um, so yeah, and Jody is saying I have a small bag and hang it on my son's picture on his shelf. I think that if we store it anywhere that we have, I have a shrine to Morgan in my house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my pendulum is right in that shrine area. <laughs> I think that it's yeah, great. just having a visual reminder, like, oh, you know, we get busy, right? We're busy, our brains are busy, there's grief, there's all sorts of stuff. And you might get down, you might get down, and then you might look over, you know, to where all their stuff is and be like, huh the pendulum of course let's have a little conversation so it's to me it's a sacred tool so wherever or however you would keep your sacred tool that you want to keep protected in a bag in a box um definitely i i would try to keep it safe and protected that's what i would do but i think the kids want it with all their stuff so you remember to use it well, that's wonderful. And um, I think that all of us will be using the pendulum, but Shelly is asking, she says, my kid flickered the lights earlier to remind me of this meeting, which is great. 
Does spirit have a favorite way to communicate? Have you, in all of your experience, figured out what their favorite way is? Um, is this one of them? Maybe the easiest, possibly? Or I don't think there's a favorite way. I don't think there's a favorite way because everybody is in such a different place in their life, in their spiritual growth. I know they love sky art and they love to send the physical signs because it helps build confidence and break down the ego monster that's like, ah, it's just wishful thinking or, or whatever. And so I, they really love that. Do they like to sit down and talk to you through a medium? Absolutely, because they can get through real clear and it's not as frustrating necessarily for them because usually, you know, we can get those messages. I believe that they really want you to develop your own abilities because I think they really want to talk to you mind to mind. So this is like, I think it's Archangel Michael. He's like a pendulum is training wheels. This is a beginner. This is the, the beginning, <laughs> but you're intended to continue to move forward because you can get to the point where you can have that telepathic communication. And oh my God, is it easier for your kids to talk to you in your head versus trying to move a pendulum? It will be, but sometimes we need to build that faith. And this is a great little tool to do that. Oh, I just got goosebumps. Yes, I think it's important <laughs> to be able to start somewhere. This is a great starting point. Um, Absolutely. I, I have another question and it's kind of interesting. Um, uh, this was one of the questions that was sent in. Most of the time I get the I love you circle going clockwise. Occasionally it goes counterclockwise. What does that mean? Oh, well, that's a great question. I'm like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> what I would do is I would just sit sit down and ask, sit down and I don't know if it's a male, I would sit down and just say, why is this different? Send them a thought. So telepathic communication is so much easier than we think, but we just love to, you know, doubt and it's the ego and it, and it's all those pieces. Um, maybe it meant, maybe it was meant to have you stop and go, wait a minute, why is this different? Then literally send them a thought say what's going on here and then whatever just zings right back into your head that's how they talk to you and it's so much easier than they want it to be so if something's a little off I want you to get grounded and I want you just to send a thought send one to them or Archangel Michael and you're probably going to think I have lost my mind and that's okay just send a thought and see what comes right back into your mind and if something's unusual stop and ask that's how you'll start to learn discernment who's talking to you and it's mostly coming from your feelings thoughts pictures that come into your mind again if it's like eh, something's not quite right then stop come back to it give it a few days if you're using it five times a day that's a bit too much in my opinion because you're getting dependent upon it pardon me and we still have to walk this path we still have to move forward with our kids so as you grow you'll never ever leave them behind as you learn more skills it just makes it easier for them to talk to you in the way that you want to talk with them that's beautiful and it doesn't necessarily have to be your kids who are answering the questions it can be our spirit guides who can communicate yep. as well. talk to them too mm -hmm. So when we're asking questions, it, it could be coming from someone who is uh, who obviously has been working with us our whole life. And um, that's also our many lifetimes, probably. <laughs> it's and about intention. Who do you intend to connect with? One of the tool, one of the ways that I learned in doing mediumship, like I'm clairvoyant, I could see them, but I had to make an energetic bridge. And so I say, like when I do a reading with somebody, I say the person's name over and over and it like creates this energetic connection so I can hear them better. So you're making an energetic connection with your child when you sit down to do the pendulum. But if you want to talk to Archangel Michael, you just set the intention. All right, Archangel Michael, I want to talk with you. Or Grandma, I want to talk with you. Or Sparky, I want to talk with you. And then it, it, you're just reaching that vibration, but everything is intention, all of it. That's beautiful. And so um, I wanted to ask you, we have three minutes left. Could you... Okay. 
with some parting words of wisdom, because I just want to tell you, first of all, everyone loves this. Everyone is saying how helpful this is, how meaningful it's been to spend time with you. I'll send you the chat box so that you can see it. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> But if you, if you could possibly, oh, let's see. Kurt is asking one question though. When I talk to my son telepathically, I always hear him responding in his voice. Can you communicate with a pet telepathically? Um, is that something that's possible? Energy is energy is energy. So this is kind of how I see it. Spirit guides, okay, angels vibrate really high. And then you have your spirit guides that are probably vibrating at a lower vibration. And then we have our loved ones in spirit and pets are probably higher than that because they're more pure or whatever. They're not going through the earth cycle. So it really is, what is my intention and who do I want to connect with? And then you really kind of hold that thought, ask them to come in. And so like I was sitting at a client's house one time and I was finishing up and I said, do you have a dog in spirit she's like yeah and I described it she the dog just came running out of the room like do 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 it just showed up everything is energy and it, everything is intention so if your dog or cat or bird or whatever is transition ask it to come into the room it might feel like you're completely making it up and that's ego and that's fine but I don't know if you've done automatic writing on my website, I have a whole free video series of how to do the automatic writing and how to talk to your kids completely free available to everybody. You don't have to be a grieving parent to do it, whatever. But if you just ask them to come in and you have an imaginary conversation, that's how it works. That's how it feels. We just think it's supposed to be different than it really is and so practicing 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 will build your confidence that that's who you're actually talking to so that's, yeah calling your bird your dog whatever yes yeah, so wonderful to know that we can talk to them obviously they're all with our kids as well and probably they're mm -hmm. joining together to communicate mm -hmm. with us which is or sleeping on your bed at night they could be yeah. there too Sleeping on, I know that's for sure. I've actually mm -hmm. felt the indention when my dog jumps up and um, is sleeping at the base of my bed, along with the other dogs that sleep there as well. <laughs> but, <Right. laughs> but anyway, this has been absolutely wonderful as always. And I just want to let everyone know again, Christine will be back at our conference in August of 2022. The conference itself is going to be amazing, but she is definitely one of our favorite people to have speak. Um, she also showed us how to use tarot cards. So she taught us how to use the pendulum, how to use tarot cards, both good ways to be able to connect with our kids in the beginning. Um, and I guess a little bit easier to break us into it. And um, anyway, I, I just want to tell you, Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being such a huge and helpful resource to helping parents heal. Is there anything that you'd like to say in closing now? Because we can go over just a few minutes since we took away. <laughs> what I will say is this. Because you're part of helping parents heal and you have kids in spirit, I guarantee you your kids are right here with you walking every single step they want to communicate with you and you can do this. And so I'm gonna be your cheerleader because nobody is extra gifted who is a professional medium. It just means that we have more practice or training. If you think it's your child or your mother or whomever, it is. Don't let the ego monster, don't let the doubt monster get in the way. So you can ask them like, okay, was that really you? And then, you know, you see a truck drive by with their name on it. Just take it, take it as a win. Even if you're like, I'm really not sure, I'm gonna say, take it, write it down, all of the different things that you're experiencing with your kids and you'll start to see a pattern. It really is when this is all brand new to you and you're in grief and you're trying to get your head above water, I want you to know that your kids love you for eternity. They will never go away. They're not upset with you. You will see them when you come back, but you being in this group 
you are absolutely on the path to open yourself up to immense spiritual growth and your kids will lead every step of the way. So move forward in faith. Even if you feel like you're stumbling, your kids have you. That's beautiful. Could you just tell them a little bit about your private group that you have? I know oh. that it costs mm -hmm. a bit, but that way, if people are interesting, interested in developing their mediumship, they can be a part of that group. Um, and I'd love for you to tell people. Okay. Just, just amazing. <laughs> yeah, my group on Facebook is called Mediumship for the Grieving Heart. And it is almost all parents, though I will let a few little, you know, maybe a grandparent or something in. I feel like parents need a place for just parents because of it's it's a different kind of loss. And so in there, I have my free video series where I give it all to you for free, exactly how I do it, the automatic writing, intuition, like it's a seven video series. Um, every week we play a game, I call it sign of the week. So I sit down and I ask the kids that are in my classroom on the other side, probably sounds really crazy, but I'm a teacher on the other side. My soul is with the kids. And here I am on this side with parents re reaching across the veil. So it's a game in uh, raising your awareness that your kids are sending signs. And so it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, we just had, I think it's Stingray still. So I think it just changed on Monday. And today I'm I'm good today, but it just raises your awareness that your kids are around. And so I have almost 3000 people in the group now and it's growing and it's a really beautiful, uplifting, gentle, nurturing energy. And that's really important to me because this challenge, this growth, this experience that you're moving through, that's growing you, whether you think it is or not, you guys need to bond together and have support and share stories and so i have everybody post how their kids come up with koala thank you i was wrong it's koala right now how does koala show up across your path and they're going around and they go in the store and turn a corner it's like oh my gosh there's a koala in front of my face not that you could plan that but they plot it and they encourage you to go different places and so it just shows all the different ways that spirit kids um, can connect with them. The other thing that I do want to mention real quick is that I do have a cruise that is actually going, it was supposed to go last year, but it is going this year, um, the Healing Hearts Cruise, um, right after Thanksgiving. So we are going to have Thanksgiving and then we're heading out for seven nights um, in the Caribbean. And so if anybody's interested, they can reach out to me. It's on my website. Um, it's going to be a nice little group and I'm going to do a lot of work with healing and opening your connections while all the parents are able to connect together. So I just wanted to let everybody know that that is a go for sure now. So that's wonderful. Thank you for doing this. And thank mm -hmm. you for telling us all of the other resources that you have available. Uh, I see that your website was posted again by April. Thank you, www.christinesalter.com. And mm -hmm. she is here in the Valley. So um, we're very fortunate to have her here. So as soon as we start our in-person meetings at Unity of Phoenix again, I'm sure that she'll be coming to speak to us, which will be wonderful, but that hasn't happened yet. They haven't allowed that yet. So um, anyway, but thank you so much. I know that Irene has kindly unmuted or allowed people to unmute to be able to say thank you and goodbye. Thank you, yes, um, thank you Christine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very thank you. much. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Christine. That was amazing. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Christine. Thank you. Thank you. Rest of the week. Thank you. 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 Thank